time in history, all four belts in the cruiserweight division will belong proudly around the waist of one man. This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. It is Monday morning, not too early. I'm joined by Frank Warren. How are you, Frank? I'm good. What about you? Yeah, all good. Have a good weekend? Not bad. Not yeah. bad. Yeah. Maybe. Standard. Did you go out on it? Get on a few no. drinks? And, no, yeah. I didn't do anything the weekend. I had a bit of the old Bakerloo and uh, that was it. But I, never, no, I didn't do anything. I just uh, hung out, watched some sport on television, a couple of fights and that. And, the UFC was on the other day. Did you watch that? Did you watch no, that? No, a couple of boys went. I think, I'm, I'm not being disrespectful. It's just it's basically not my thing. I can't get in. Yeah, it's a great way to produce it, but I've never got into it. Just, it's not my thing. I never got into wrestling or anything like that either. It never, you know, it weren't me. I'm, I like the boxing. I, I like all sports, but I'm, you I know. thought you was a wrestler, Frank. In your day. Um, I thought you was a wrestler in no, your no, day. No, you're mixing up with someone else. I used to do Greek wrestling and all that <laughs> stuff. That weren't me, mate. And it's wrong county you're in. Your county, I think they do that, don't they? I'm venturing out more towards yeah, uh, I know, London yeah. now, anyway. Um, did you watch the the Haymaker show on Channel Five? Yes, I did. Yeah. yeah. Um, what did you make of Joe Joyce? I think I like Joe Joyce. I mean, you know, he was, he was, you know, we were quite close to doing a deal with him, and uh, he went with David. He, I, I think, he looked very composed. He looked what he did. He, you know, he done done well. He can't ask no more than that. You know, um, it's his third fight. He blasted out a guy who. He was always going to blast out. He'd done what was on the script, and that was it. You know, that's that's how it is. And you know, he's, he's 32. Was he 32 years of age now? Yeah. He's got tremendous amateur pedigree. pedigree you know, he boxed and everything. I think that's when you. It's funny. You look at you know when people talk to me about Daniel Dubois. He's 12 years older than Daniel, and he's got a much much uh, longer amateur career and and won everything and more or less everything as he could as an amateur. I think you know, I, I remember. I think on that. Program, they say he's the most de decorated amateur. I don't know if that's true or not. Somebody said, I'm sure one of the commentators said that. So he's done brilliantly, Joe, but that's the difference between him and Daniel. That Daniel hasn't had all that experience as an amateur, but he's still where he's at and still qualified. But you know, I like Joe Joyce, I think he's a nice guy and uh, and he's yeah, he's, he's looking well and he's he's done what he had to do. You know, as I say, it was always scripted what it was going to be, and I'm sure there'll be tougher matches to, to be made for him. Surely that's a potential fight in the future between Dubois of course and Joyce. It is down yeah. the road. Absolutely, that's that's no not one that's uh, that's going to phase anybody. It's a fight we we you know we 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 were making due course. I'm sure of that, and I'm sure Joe would like that. I know Daniel would like it. They've sparred together. They you know for all accounts, uh, Daniel give a good account of himself. So I don't think it's something that we worry about. With only kind of three fights between them, they're kind of on the similar sort of yeah, they're timing they are, wise. They are yeah. as pros, but yeah. one guy is ha yeah. has, has done everything as an amateur. He's fought around around the world, and he's fought in in uh, world championships. He's a silver medalist in the Olympic Games and so forth. So that's the level he was at. Whereas D Daniel only had seven senior fights as an amateur, so you know he's far more experienced. But Daniel's learning very quickly in the gym as a pro, and you know I think he's gonna I think he's gonna come through very quickly. Around four weeks till your show at the O2, April 14th, uh, obviously headlined by Billy Joe Saunders and Martin Murray in a world title fight, and also Terry Flanagan against Maurice Hooker, double world title night. Um, obviously a week after, uh, in Belfast, Carl Frampton against Nanito Donnell. I know you're excited about this, Frank. <coughs> I'm very excited. It's a good fight. It's a quality fight, you know, two excellent uh, exponents of their art. Um, both um, former world champions, and uh, I'm hoping to get it confirmed it'll be for the WBO interim title. And uh, that'll add a bit more spice to it. If not, it'll be whoever wins it will get, in, I believe, get into the number one spot. But that's what we're working on, and hopefully we will know today. And then obviously, dependent on what happens a month later with Selby and Warrington, yeah. We'll kind of deter the future. Well, then we'll make for them. some decisions yeah. then as to where we go. I mean, they're both two cracking fights, two cracking shows, and uh, you know we're looking. We're, we're, I mean, I'm sure anybody who likes their boxing and enjoys their boxing, everybody's looking forward to it. The great atmosphere. The lead show's going brilliantly well, uh, as has the show in Belfast. I mean, they're 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 going to be sellouts, and that that's fantastic news for us and for the fighters. I understand that the tickets towards um, Leeds are sort of. Are going towards the twenty thousand mark? Is that true? Or? That's true. Yeah. That's absolutely true. And uh, you know that's good. That's, that's brilliant. 
still a couple of months away, so... Well, we're eight weeks away, I think, at least, yeah. So, we've got plenty of time, yeah. No problem. Um, yeah, I just wanted to talk to you about um, Canelo and Golovkin, uh, Frank. Obviously, a lot in the news recently about traces of Clem Brutal being found in Canelo's system. <coughs> the fight yeah. is still going ahead. Uh, the reasoning is down to the infamous Mexican meat that's uh, hit a few fighters before, apparently. So, what's your take on it? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know a true background. He's, he's tested positive. I mean, is it Vardar who, took, who did the test? Vardar, yeah. So it's Vardar. And I don't know whether they actually... I don't know if Vardar actually do uh, bring, like, a, like UK, the U, you know, British uh, drug agency, whether they bring charges. I don't think they do. So who knows what's going to happen. Uh, you know, I think the fight, as I mentioned before, will go ahead. Um, if it... I don't know how much they found in it. I mean, what are the exact details? How much is... Any in it is too much, but sometimes there has, and I know in the past, and I'm going back quite to, you know, times in the past where people are on these, remember there's a big thing about high protein diets, you know, the meat diet, you keep eating meat. And I know people have, it has entered into the, into the, into the system via the, the uh, what they've been given animals. And whether that's the case with Canelo or not, I've got no idea. But if you're guilty, you're guilty and you shouldn't be fighting. Was we'll sit, you know, I'm sure they've got an explanation, and I can't see uh, Nevada allowing uh, an event to go through if somebody's been found guilty of um, taking drugs. I was talking to Liam events. Smith. Sorry, Frank. I was talking to Liam Smith the other the other night, and quite a few fighters shared this uh, opinion that the fight is only going ahead due to the size of the fight. Well, it's true. If this was a fighter is fighting a six rounder on the same card. You know. Why? Well, I, I, you have to lean towards that and, and think that may be the case. That <laughs> is that right, okay. Frank? Well, that's not, of course it's not right. Everybody should be treated the same. But we all would like to be treated the same, wouldn't we? But we're not. That's not how the world is. I mean, the world's not like that. And uh, obviously that's, that show's driven by money. But what you need to know, or what the, you know, what the public needs to know, is how much of the substance was in his system. How much of it was in there? Was it a huge amount? Was it you know, just a touch of it? What was it? I've got no idea. The normal levels, I think, one of the statements says, of what could be in the system, uh, they're putting it down to, obviously, the meat, so normal levels within that. I believe that that's what that is. So what's normal levels? I don't know. But Nor do I. Yeah. I mean, I've got no idea. So I suppose what would clear it all up is to actually that, for that to come out, and then people can then make their decisions and more importantly um, you know the, the various the, the, the jurisdiction that the fight's in can rule on it and it quite clearly has um, something to do with the fact that Golovkin and his team haven't said that they don't want to fight over it that may have posed another problem if if they had been more um, well, you know, vocal been tested in that way with it. You know, I just hope he wasn't taking it when he uh, fought Liam now there was tests done and it never showed up in that so this can only have happened since according to you know Violet. I hope that is the case but you know as uh, I'm sure everybody says I'm, you know, you've got to agree that uh, it seems that it's been pushed to one side and the fight's going ahead anyway which, which if that is the case can't be right There hasn't been uh, a UK broadcaster announced for that fight yet Frank is there a chance that that winds up on I think, Box Nation I think BT. the negotiations are still going on. The problem is, is because the last time it was done in the UK, it was done on a pay-per-view basis, and what you've got now, you've got um, the um, that same night, you've got David Hay and Tony Bellew fighting, so you can't have two pay-per-views on the same night. So I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, that's interesting how that pans out. Actually, yeah, because. I'm sure one of the UK broadcasters will oh, show that. Oh, of course they'll show yeah. it, but it depends what the deal is and how it, how it works out. I'm not sure it will, but um, that's the position for that. Um, any news on your future international fights coming up with, uh, obviously, your partners out in America and so forth? We're announcing our TV, American TV dates, uh, which we will announce on Thursday. We've done a deal for quite a few of our shows, which will go on. Uh, on will be broadcast in America on uh, on um, one of the major channels. So we're pleased again with that, and we're making an announcement with that. 
Six. I'm hoping I'm going to be an <laughs> announcing. I want to announce is Billy Joe Saunders in with Golovkin or Canelo if he's clean. That's what I'd like to be announcing. But I mean, he said before, best case scenario for him if Golovkin does beat Canelo for Billy Joe. He said that, and I think you'll find it easier to deal with Tom Oh, Loeffler. absolutely, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, look, Eric Gomez and Golden Boy, we do a lot of business with them there, you know, and I really enjoy working with them, but they're not stupid, and I think that, you know, after we beat David Lemieux, any chance of that fight went out the window. But the interesting thing about it is, what happens to the loser? Because the loser of that fight will want to fight for a world title. So it'll either be another rematch, or there's only other one title to fight for. So, you know, there's, there's some various options and, and there'll be some interesting situations develop after the result. Saw some stories on the internet yesterday linking Gary Spike O'Sullivan with a fight with Canelo, saying if regardless of whether Canelo wins or not, that will be well, his Gary next fight good, in September. Gary had a great win, didn't he, on the uh, undercard, yeah. undercard, he'd done really well. But Bill beat their man. I mean, Bill was supposed to be making up the numbers against them. You, that tells you where their head is. They might try to fight Gary, who Bill's beat, and Bill beat Lemieux rather than you know share the ring with Bill. So that tells you uh, where you know where their heads are. That, they don't fancy that fight. I know they don't fancy it. As I sat there watching Bill doing a job on Lemieux, at the corner of my eye, I was looking at looking at. Uh, Eric and a couple of guys from Golden Boy, and I could see that fight just drifting off into the sunset. That was gone. Um, you could see also Sky are obviously show, uh, announced their schedule for the international sort of few months to fight that they're showing. So um, obviously they've announced Dylan White and Lucas Brown to be on HBO as well recently. Yeah. Yeah, um, Peter Nelson. You know, that's an it's, it's a you know, it's a decent fight, but. HBO, Peter Nelson, astounds me. I don't understand where he's at. One minute he tells you he's not got money for fights, for good quality fights, and then he finds money for fights. And obviously I can only assume that's because he's caught in matchroom over trying to get Anthony Joshua. That's the only reason. I can't think of another reason why he would take that fight. So I want Anthony Joshua again. He's that jewel in the crown that's opened the doors up for matchroom to get dates for these other fights. Wonder if he's, wonder if he gets his whack out of it. There's nothing wrong with that, though, is there? Of course, there's not. No. Good. That's what Matram are using for him. I'm just saying. I'm wondering what our Anthony Joshua feels about that. Um, in a recent interview I did with Eddie Hearn, he was talking about Billy Joe Saunders and said that if Billy Joe Saunders was a free agent, that he would make him, in his words, a serious offer. What are your thoughts on that, I think? Well, I think Bill's answered that already, hasn't he? What did he put a tweet out the other day? Well, no, he, he was... I don't know what he tweeted the other day, but in one of our videos he actually did with James, he said that he used the expression that Hearn had been flirting with him, air quotes, uh, but he's loyal to... He wasn't to, taking those trousers down again, was he? <laughs> he says he was loyal to you, or he's loyal to you, rather. So, yeah. Well, uh, that's nice, and I appreciate it from Bill, and I'm very comfortable where I'm at with Bill. We've had a great relationship through thick and thin, and uh, and I'm loyal to him. You know, he sees my prime concern, and uh, you know, we get we do well. I'm not I'm not at all worried about what Hearn's saying. I mean, if I was Hearn, I'd be. He's got more worries than me. He needs to worry about what's happening with Anthony Joshua when his contract runs out. Because it does run out, so, so I understand. But then again, you know, Anthony Joshua may come out and say what Bill said. It'd be interesting to see if he does do that. So that doesn't, I know you said you're not worried, but it doesn't kind of aggravate you to hear that kind no, of talk? No, because, you know, that's yeah. what this business is like. You know, you know, sometimes you get you get those, like that, it's that gym rat mentality, isn't it? You know, they do those, say these things and do these things, but and try to destabilise and unsettle. But Bill's in a, you know, Bill's in a good place. He's on the cusp of getting some serious, seriously big fights, and he's done that without the help of uh, anyone else. He's, you know, we've done that together as a team, and uh, and it'll get beyond and upwards now. And you know, we're we're committed and we're working hard to ensure he's got to come through his fight first. He's got a tough fight. If he comes through that, it'll be onwards and upwards, and uh, that's the way it will be. But in the meantime, you know, uh, 
he's got he's got the, he's fighting on the uh, show on the 14th then he'll be out again in September I think you said to me before why wouldn't someone be interested in someone like Billy Joshua of course, Joshua's? Of course like everybody's yeah. interested in Anthony Joshua aren't they they're all interested when that contract they want to know that contract unless Anthony Joshua comes out and says look I'm committed to Eddie Hearn I'm committed to Matram then that's the end of it but he hasn't as yet and it may be interesting. maybe he might stay with him who knows he believe then Somebody may make him a very, very substantial and attractive offer. That he can't, make him an offer he can't refuse. It does happen in this sport sometimes. Apparently so. Apparently so. Um, what other news have you got to tell us, Frank, about upcoming shows or dates? Uh, well, we're working on our we're, we're we're working on our show for the uh, summer. We've got um, we've done a couple of shows in June, and we're doing a show in July, and. Uh, you know, as I say, we're working on it. We'll have some really good shows and some decent fights on, and a big announcement this week. I hope. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it, or no, we'll do it this week. You can give us you kind of a, back te in again. a you teaser. Can, you can come back. I'll just tease you. There'll be a big announcement this Signing week. Signing wise, show wise, it's a big tease. <laughs> you are a tease, Frank. You are. A yeah, tease. I'm a tease. I'm a bit old to be a tease. I don't know about that. But anyway, um, no, we're, we're we're hopefully on uh, this week. We'll be. Every time I come in here, it seems like I'm, I do repeat myself with this question, and I always want to know. But where nothing's been announced, I have to keep asking you, Frank. Tyson Fury, any update regarding his future? And every time you come in here, all I want to do is tell you, yes, this is what's happening. But at the moment, I just can't do what, it. Yet. What seems to be the hold-up about him? And because he he puts things out on social media, we don't know what to take for you know as. He said the other day that a date was coming soon and a venue was coming soon. Something sure, that's all going to happen. I'm sure he's. Yeah. I'm sure what he's tweeting out or putting out on media is all what will happen. But it's when it will be announced for that. But to your understanding, is it a case of he's still deciding where he wants to be, no, promoter-wise, or? I don't know. I think he's made a decision where he wants to be. It's a question of how it's you know how it's all put together. Okay. Well, like I said, I'll continue asking until you've got something to tell us about that. Um, just the one show in May, Frank, is it, for you? Yeah, one show. The Selby Warrington yeah, fight, yeah. that's correct, yeah. One show in May, a couple in June and, uh, and July. We've got the World Cup on, so we've got pick our dates. You'll be clashing with football matches. Hopefully... Uh, no, it's bad enough clashing with boxing matches, isn't it? That's all you've got to be, you know. But the idea of this game is to ensure you get a big audience. You don't want to be, for example, um, England in a World Cup game going up against that. It'd be pointless, wouldn't it? It'd be mm. a waste of everybody's time. We wouldn't want to be doing that. So we've got to pick our dates and be sensible. And that's what we try to do. You know, um, and so we've got and so we've got a couple of good things happening. So fingers crossed we get one of the right. Frank, I caught up with uh, Liam Smith in Liverpool over the weekend. Uh, he said that everything was all but done for May the 12th <coughs> against Saddam Ali for the world title. So Yeah, it is. Uh, we've done the deal with Golden Boy, so he'll be challenging him for his old title. And I hope and believe he's got a great chance of winning it back. And what a great chance for him to be, uh, I think, the first fight from Liverpool to be a two-time world champion. Yeah, I don't so know if that's definitely I true, but that's what Liam Smith I, I, said. It, I can't think of anybody else, and I've been around longer than all of you, so I can't think of anybody. I'm no doubt somebody has said I'm wrong, but I think he, I think what Liam says is is actually true. It's a not an easy fight for him. It's a tough fight. You know, he, he was Ali was basically going in there to make up the numbers for Cotto's uh, retirement fight, but he obviously upset the odds there big time. So uh, you know, he's got the belt. He's not really looking to give it up. So Liam's going to have to be at his best, but he is at his best, and I think a, a Liam Smith. On the money, proper preparation, not having any breaks in sparring, not going to fights, having been cut and so forth. He's, he's a dangerous fighter, and so hopefully he will bring that belt back to the UK. He was also talking about um, the fight could have happened on the undercard of Golovkin Canelo yeah. 2, but he said point blank the offer, the money wasn't right. Well, it wasn't right, and basically the reason for that is that they're joint promoters. So Loveless team and uh, and Golden Boy, and I suppose they got a budget for the undercard, and they didn't want to exceed that budget. I mean, that fight doesn't need an undercard, does it? It's a ma massive event, 
Um, it would have been great expo more exposure for Liam, but you know the money wasn't great, so it's a standalone show in its own right that's going on in New York. I'm assuming it would have been very difficult to kind of tempt Salam Ali to come over here. Well, the problem could. They didn't want to. It's either that or go to purse bids. And if we went to purse bids, you know, there's no way you could find the money that was needed to bring him here from a purse bid situation. It wasn't the big. But you know, Liam's a, Liam's a, he's, you know, he's a, he's like a a real good French wine. He travels well, and uh, I'm quite sure when he gets out there, he'll, he'll show everybody. He's going to get his belt back and reclaim that belt. Do you love a drop of wine, don't you, Frank? I don't mind a glass of wine. Never. I'm a drop of wine brew. Ties on that, yeah. um, the fight will take place May the 12th in Verona, New York, I believe. Uh, yeah, just outside, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. Um, any news on where people can look for tickets? Is a press it's conference a gold, coming up? It's a Golden Boy show and there'll be a press conference and they'll, 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 they'll announce all that in due course. Speaking of tickets, as you just brought tickets up, so when when uh, when AJ and uh, the Parker fight, when that was announced by the prom his promoters or the promoters, they said that all the 40 and 60 quid tickets were gone, they went straight away. But this bundle suddenly reappeared uh, and are available. Well, I can't make out why. How, how can that happen? They're either sold or they're not sold. And they're all... There's lots of them to be had, and I think that's in my opinion. I may be wrong, and I'd love to be proven wrong. Maybe I wouldn't want to be proven wrong, but I think that's because those tickets didn't sell on the secondary market, and suddenly they've come back again. And how did they get on the secondary market? And who's got them now? It's very interesting. Especially all this stuff going on in Parliament at the moment, and this new legislation they're bringing out about this to help the fans, stop the fans being ripped off. Well, I suppose that's a question for. Uh Mr. Eddie Hunt, I should imagine. Yeah, he's got, yeah, he's got a great. It, next time you're doing your interview, ask him that question. All right. I might say to him, Frank Warren would like to know. Is that all right? To I say don't that? think it's just me who wants to know. I think the fans want to know. You know, if a ticket's 40 quid or 60 quid, I don't want to be paying 100 quid and 200 quid for it, do I? That's a fan. That's for the fans' interest. You know, that's what this is all about. You know, how comes that's the case? And how comes they're back on the market? What, what, what went on in between? Why was that? You know, why are you saying you sold out when you weren't sold out? Who bought all those tickets? When you said they sold them out, you come I mean, obviously you know who bought them. What did they do with them? How it comes they're now back on there for face value? All those cheap tickets that sold out like that, and then appeared on StubHub. Well, there's an answer for everything, Frank. So we'll I'm find sure out. There's an answer. That's, uh, I'm sure that's what the fans want to do. You know, we're friends of the fans. We don't think that the fans should be ripped off with tickets. We don't like the idea of the secondary market sponsoring shows. They're not fan friendly. This is about being fan friendly. This is what it should be about, not ripping fans off. That's what the secondary market does. It rips off the fans. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Frank? No, that's about it, mate. What about you? you Anything you can think of? Um, no, I think... Uh, you going to Moscow? <laughs> Pro probably not. You're not, you're not, you're not going to oh, chemical I'm warfare. I'm a plastic so. Arsenal fan, so... Yeah, yeah, Are you going there? Yeah, I've just, ordered, I've just had to make the measure of chemical war suit, but I'm going out there. Could have been worse. No, it could have been... I'm talking in a footballing sense, team-wise. Could have been Atletico in Madrid. So. Well, that, that, I think we'd all done that. I think, yeah, I think... Uh, who knows? It's all... It's a shame, isn't it, what's going on with the old football? I don't know. The last three wins are just papering over the cracks, exactly. surely. Exactly. Fingers in dikes. Yeah. Okay. All right, All right we'll, we'll look forward to um, any more updates you've got coming up. Just ring us up, let us come in and... Oh, I certainly will. Yeah. Hey, you'll, be you'll be back in again this week. Okay. All right. All right. No problem. Toon Cassis here with Frank Warren for IFL TV. Thank you very much. Time in history, all four belts in the cruiserweight division will belong proudly around the waist of one man.